Hi, it's Jessica from Shambray Blues. I'm glad you're here. We're starting the sew along today. It's been a rough week for me as far as getting things done. I've had some internet issues and haven't uh, gotten to post as often as I would have liked. But uh, just so you know, the newest of my tutorials on um, altering your pattern are now available on YouTube. There's five new ones out there today and you can start there if you're not familiar with how the sew along works. We'll just go through everything a little bit at a time. Today we're doing McCall's 7061. It's this view here. Uh, it's view C. We're working on the knit top. We're going to start with the pocket. It's called the kangaroo pocket. And I am using um, just some cotton thread in my machine. I have a narrow zigzag stitch that I'm going to use. And my settings on my machine are at 2.5. So that means it's a, a very narrow zigzag. It looks like a straight stitch from a distance, but it has enough um, stretch for the fabric. And I have a knit needle in the machine. That's another important thing. If you aren't familiar with working with knits, you should always use a ballpoint needle so it doesn't snag and uh, put a run in your fabric. The other thing that is optional, but I am using a walking foot. So what that does is it moves the layers of fabric through the machine evenly, doesn't let, um, let it get stuck down in the feed dog. Sometimes I have found on my particular machine that knits would get stuck down in the bottom and I'd have trouble with thread breaking. So I bought a, a walking foot recently. Um, I think I got mine from Joann's. You can also get them on Amazon and it really has improved the way that it sews. So here we go. So we're gonna start with the uh, curved pocket edge. Uh, I should hold it up so you can see better. So this is what the pattern piece looks like. It has a funny shape because the seam allowance is sticking out there. So you're gonna turn that back um, five eighths of an inch and we're gonna stitch along that line with the zigzag. So you don't have to worry too much about knits unraveling. And I'm just zigzagging very close to the raw edge, so I'm not going to um, turn this over a second time. You can, if you prefer a clean finish, to make it a little narrower and turn it over twice. And that will give you a nice clean finish on there. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just doing it this way. So now I'm going to do the other side, turning it over five eighths of an inch and just zigzagging. Okay, then the next step is to stitch the top of the pocket and the bottom of the pocket. And I'm going to do that again with a zigzag stitch. Same method, turning it over five eighths of an inch, zigzagging straight across the top. And then when we do this, we'll um, use a special top stitch to put it onto the, the front of the shirt. because you're going to sew it again as a, with a top stitch so you don't have to back tack. It's not going to come out. Now I'm going to do the bottom the same way, just folding it over 5 eighths of an inch and stitching. I 
I mentioned in the post here that if you want to receive live comments of when I'm doing tutorials, if you leave a comment on the post that says live, you should get um, automatic notifications each time I'm working on a project. I don't use a lot of pins, um, especially when I'm sewing with knits because pins can uh, make the knits run and so I just prefer to work without them um, and I'll show you some tricks on how I do that. Okay, so we've got the top stitched and now the bottom stitched. The next thing to do is the side and I'm going to stitch the side even though um, we will top stitch it down onto the front of the shirt again but it gives me a guideline to follow and rather than just pressing each piece and taking time to do that I find it's easier to just stitch it in place and then stitch over the first line of stitching when I add it to the garment. Also, then you don't need as many pins. So, here we go. Okay, there's one side, we'll do the other side. So make sure and um, leave any questions you have. I'll try and answer them as I go along, but it's kind of hard for me to see my phone is tiny and my eyes aren't that good. So. I will do my best to answer them. If not during the video, then after the video, I'll stop and answer questions. So I'm just zigzagging the other side of the pocket. All right. So I've got all four sides sewn now. And this is the front of my shirt. I have marked my pocket placement with two dots in black ink. And what I use to mark is a quilting pen. It looks like this. It's just a marker, um, but it's heat sensitive. So if I go back in and iron this, it'll make my marks disappear, which is fabulous. It also comes off in the laundry, but um, it's really easy to use. And they come in different colors for working on different fabrics. It's one of my favorite tools. So now I'm going to take the pocket that I just stitched and I'm going to match the top corners to the two marks that I have on my shirt. I changed the pocket placement a little bit on my garment. I held it up and decided to make it a little bit lower than what the pattern had marked. I prefer a little lower pocket. I'm kind of long-waisted and it just fits me better. So I'm going to pin top and bottom here. Now I prefer to um, iron everything at the very end. If you like to iron a lot, um, you can do that in, you know, in between steps, but uh, my choice is to just iron at the end of most things. It just depends on what it is, but for the most part, I just iron at the end of my sewing project. Um, so I'm pinning the top corners of the pocket and the side and then the bottom, just a couple pins here and there. I don't sew over my pins because it tends to break needles and it messes up the machine for the most part and machine maintenance is expensive, so I try not to do it. All right, so here's where I am. I've got the pocket pinned on there, the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to go in and stitch, I'm going to start on the top, I'm going to stitch this very top line here right over my first line of stitching. I'm just going to go right over the top. The same stitch I used before, it's a narrow zigzag, 
I have my stitch length set to 2.5 on my machine and I'm just going to go right over the top. Here, because it's the um, front of the garment and I'm doing this top stitching, I will have to back tack a little bit. If you're not familiar with back tacking, most machines have either a lever or a button. looks like a U. Um, right in the front and that will, if you push that while you're sewing it'll actually go backward a couple of stitches and that will anchor your sewing. Another way to do it if you're uncomfortable with that or if you have an older machine that doesn't have a back tack function you can use Fray Check. It's a little bottle of liquid and you can dab that on the end of your seams and it's like a plastic it dries hard and it doesn't come off and that is a good way to anchor seams also. Oops, okay, so here we go. Sewing right over my first line of stitching. is you sew the top and the bottom. Um, the bottom also would include the side here. So I'm going to start my next line of stitching at this corner. I'm going to back tack. I'm going to come straight down to the side and then turn it to go across the bottom and up the other side. You want to make sure and leave the curved edge of the pocket free because that's where your hands go in. And same zigzag stitch right over the top of your first line of stitching. You can use that as a guide. Get my pedal in order there. Want to, you can also leave me a comment and tell me um, where you're from. I'd love to know where some of my viewers are from today. I'm in Wisconsin. It's a beautiful sunny day and uh, quite warm here this time of year. So I'm taking out the pins before I get anywhere near them so that I don't run into them with my presser foot. I'm pivoting the edge here so that means you put the needle down in the fabric, you lift the presser foot up, and then you turn your fabric 45 degrees to make a nice square corner. Put my presser foot back down now I'm going to stitch straight across the bottom edge of the pocket. is a cotton knit I found at Walmart in the dollar section. <laughs> I love the Walmart dollar fabric section and uh, I've never bought knit from there before but I think it's gonna work out really great. So. Alright so I pivoted at the corner of the pocket and I'm just coming up the side and then we'll tack the edge of it. this up so you can see. The other thing I do is I just leave all my threads kind of hanging there and then I go back in when I do my pressing and trim all my threads at the very end. So that's what our pocket looks like so far. It's straight and even it looks good. So don't worry if the fabric looks a little puckered when you're sewing it. Um, once you press it that'll go away. 
Also, your first washing after you've constructed your garment makes a big difference. It kind of helps the, the threads adhere to the fabric a bit and um, it'll have just a little smoother look afterwards. So that's the pocket. The next step to the pattern is to sew the front to the back at the shoulders. Now, in reading through the pattern directions, they have recommended that you add, um, stitch around the top, stay stitch, the top of the neckline. And I don't stay stitch. I have to say, I just don't do it. I don't like it in a knit. I don't think it really makes a whole lot of difference. If it was a woven fabric that has to be rigid, has to stay in a certain place, I think that's different. So for knits, I just don't stay stitch. So I'm just going to skip that part of the directions and I'm going to now sew my shoulder seams together. And I'm using again a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. And I'm, I'm going to go back later and finish my seam edges, so I'm not worried about doing that. And again, the same stitch, the um, narrow zigzag stitch is what we're using for the shoulder. Another tip, um, be sure to pre-wash your fabric before you cut it. If you haven't started already, you should pre-wash before you cut because knits tend to shrink quite a bit. Okay, so there we have our shoulder seams. There we go. See how easy that is? Now we're ready to put the collar on. So the collar for this pattern in the illustration has a drawstring uh, at the top of the neck. And I have decided to eliminate the drawstring in this tutorial as well for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I don't think it's very practical. Um, they've taken a lot of drawstring designs out of most garments today, especially around hoods, because you know people would get choked on them accidentally and I'm just going to be lounging in this. I don't really see a practical use for that drawstring. I'm, I'm not going to want to have it tight around my neck so I'm just eliminating it. You could, if you like the look of the, the bow, just tack a bow on the front of the collar. I think that'd be much easier and much more practical rather than putting the buttonholes in and making a casing which is what the pattern recommends. So I'm skipping that part. All right, so the collar piece itself is very large. It's cut on the fold. And it's probably one of the biggest pieces of the whole pattern. So what I'm gonna do is put right sides together and I'm going to sew this seam. So the seam here is the, cur the curved edge. When you have a, an odd shaped piece, it's really confusing to know which part of it is supposed to go to the neckline. <laughs> Uh, and this is designed to have more drape in the front of the, the piece. So that's why it has a funny curve to the neck. So I'm going to stitch this seam with right sides together using the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Same as before, using my narrow zigzag stitch just from top to bottom. Again, I'm not going to bother pinning it. Just matching the pieces as I go with my fingers. And uh, fortunately, the knit has a bit of stretch and you can kind of coax them together so we don't get wrinkles. Okay, a little tack at the end of that seam. Um, all 
All right, now this can be confusing. So here we have this curved edge. And the next step is to fold that inside. And basically what you're doing is you're hiding that seam in there. And again, I, I'm not gonna finish that seam. Uh, it's just gonna be hidden inside this piece. No one's gonna see it. So I'm not doing anything with that. So now I'm folding it with the wrong sides together. And I'm gonna match the seam on the both sides of the neck. And this seam is going to be at the center back of the neck. So if you think about how it's gonna look when it's on you, like most turtlenecks have the seam at the center back. And then the front is just gonna have the fold. So I'm going to hold, I have my center back seam here in my right hand. And now I'm gonna find the center front. And the reason I'm doing that is that's gonna help me know exactly where to place it on the neckline of my garment without having to use a whole bunch of notches and be confused with all of that. I don't like notches either. All right, so I'm just gonna smooth it out a little here. So I'm marking the center front fold with a pin and I have a pin mark at center back. Got that? Center front, center back is where the seam is. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it on the garment. And the way to do that is to find the center front and center back of your garment. We're gonna do it the same way, and that's by folding it in half. So I'm folding just, I'm looking at the front neck Actually, I'll fold it this direction, it'll be easier to see. Matching my shoulder seams. Here's my front neck. I'm gonna put a pin right where the center front is, exactly marked by the fold. I'm gonna do the same thing on the center back. I'm gonna mark it with a pin. So when I open it up, You can see I've got a pin, center front, pin at center back, okay? Then we're gonna match this piece to the right side of the garment. So I'm gonna begin in the center back. I have a pin here. I have the seam from the collar and I'm going to pin it right where that pin mark was. And then I'm gonna move along to the shoulder, kind of get a rough idea of where that's gonna fall. It's not necessarily halfway between the front and the back. Um, the neckline in the back is actually a little smaller than the front. So it's gonna be off a little bit, but I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in there. I'm going to move the fabric as I sew it to get a nice fit. The pattern piece has all sorts of circles and notches that help. Um, I just don't like them and I don't use them. So <laughs> this is my method. I think circles and notches are confusing. All right, so I'm working my way around to the front. And da -da -da. I'm gonna pin my center front neck to the center front neck marking of the collar. It's right sides together. This is all right sides together. Okay, and then I'm gonna put one or two pins in between there. Just to hold things in place, but it's gonna move a little bit as I sew it. So I'm not gonna use a lot of pins. Okay, so I've gotten around about halfway around the neck so far. Still have to do the other side. 
and I'm gonna have to flip this over so I can reach it. There we go. Couple of housekeeping things. So this project I'm hoping to finish this week. Um, then I'm gonna be moving on to the next month's um, pattern I just picked up at the store so you know what it is. Where did I put it? We're gonna be doing the Mimi G pattern, um, the trench coat. This is Simplicity 1016. So that's coming up if you're interested in that. And I thought it'd be great for um, spring, so I'm looking for fabric for that. And if you have any requests for patterns or things that you'd like to learn how to sew, just leave me a comment because I am always looking uh, for different ideas and we can accommodate some requests. So that'll make it fun. All right, so I have my whole neckline pinned and I'll turn it over so you can see a little better exactly how it's gonna look from the right side. Here we go. So it's a big collar, like I said, and it's not stitched yet, but it's just pinned together. In the pattern directions, they suggest that you baste the collar edges before applying it to the neckline. You can certainly do that if it makes you feel more comfortable. I just don't. I don't like basting either. <laughs> I like to get through things and move on to the next project and it's easier without basting in this case. So I took my um, sewing machine apart here so I can easily fit this over the end of my machine. And now I'm going to stitch all the way around the neck. I'm going to start at the shoulder seam because I'm going to need to back tack this and it's better to have a little lump because you have a seam there anyway versus like if you started in the center front sewing, you'd have a sort of a little lump there that would never go away. Um, you could also start at center back, that would be okay too. Uh, but I think the center back is already thick enough and I'm just gonna start at the shoulder. So I'm stitching this with the collar down on the face plate and um, I'm looking at the back of the top, the back of the top, and it's inside out from this point of view. And I'm gonna match my edges. I'm using that same narrow zigzag stitch with a 5 a inch seam allowance. I'm gonna stitch all the way around. taking the pins out before I get too close to them. I don't want them underneath my presser foot at all. And just kind of got to work um, your hand underneath to make sure that it's smooth because you're sort of sewing blind. You can't really see what you're doing at this point. You don't want to have any wrinkles. top stitching that we'll do which will help kind of reinforce the back and keep it length flat. All right. So I'd love to see pictures of your projects. Um, you know as you go put a picture here in the group or message me. I'd love to see how things are coming together for you. All right. 
Also, i am got a podcast that's coming soon, if you're into that. Um, probably at the end of next week or um, early the following week, definitely by the end of the month, I'll have everything uh, in place for the podcast. And we're going to talk about some techniques and um, interviews some people in the sewing industry. and It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll post that link here too when it's ready. This is what we have. This is the front neck. This is the back. The seam is at the center back of the neckline. It looked good. It's not real stretched or anything and it worked out quite well. Okay, so the pattern directions call for this top stitching and the reason that they do that is uh, you're top stitching the seam allowance to the garment, not to the collar but to the garment. And the reason for that is to keep it uh, in place so that if you're wearing the top, you don't have the seam allowance flipping up and down when you're wearing it, because that'd be really irritating. And plus it looks nice. So for the top stitching, I'm using a stretch stitch. You can also use the zigzag stitch if you prefer, um, or if your machine doesn't have a stretch stitch, you can definitely do that. And I'm going to start the top stitching for this at center back. Um, you, could, you could start at the shoulder seam also, but I would not recommend starting in the center front because you don't want any sort of um, mistakes there. So I would recommend starting at center back. So I'm sewing the top stitching to the front of the, or I'm sorry, the seam allowance to the front of the garment and the back of the garment. And I'm going to use a very narrow um, seam allowance here. It'll be about an eighth of an inch away from the collar seam. You could make it a little bit wider. You could do it a quarter of an inch if you prefer. And a good guide for that is uh, most presser feet have sort of a hole inside the presser foot. And if you follow the hole with the seam line, you'll get a nice straight stitch right where you want it to go. They do sell um, different type of presser feet too for for sewing along seams, but I don't happen to have one, so I do it this way. So I'm just going to use this stretch stitch all the way around. Keep my collar in place. Stitch is especially for knits and it's awfully slow to, to sew, but it locks the stitching forward and backward as it goes around um, the neckline. So it has lots of give to it, which is great for something that's going to be going over your head. You want it to be able to stretch a little bit. Again, I'm not using pins, I'm just uh, separating the pieces of fabric with my hands so that they're smooth and flat. And you 
just have to feel underneath every once in a while, make sure you're still catching the seam allowance in place. So I will be adding this tutorial to YouTube as well. Uh, I think I'm going to end up breaking it down into two parts. So this will be part one and there'll be a second part where we'll do the uh, sleeves and the cuff. All right, bear with me a little longer. I'm almost halfway around here. my blog too. Um, it's chambryblues.com. I also have a lifestyle blog called Designer Sweet Spot where it's I talk about home decor and crafts, recipes. The Chambray Blues site is a rather new project for me. I decided to move all my sewing posts um, in one spot because it's one of the most popular things that I do. So it's now its own thing. Okay, we are all the way around, yay. So the walking for foot works really well for top stitching too because you have uh, layers of fabric that can sometimes cause problems with your machine and the walking foot really helps with that. So here we are, this is what it looks like. Hope you can see that. Top stitched seam allowance to the garment body and from the inside you can't really see anything from the inside so that won't help you but anyway that's how it's supposed to look on the outside uh, the next section would be the sleeves however I do things a little different so I prefer to do the hem next and the reason I do that is I hem the front first and then I hem the back and after I do that, I set the sleeve and then I do the whole underarm seam all the way down at the same time. So that's where we're going with this. Now I did the front um, section earlier before I started the video to kind of play with the settings on my machine. And I decided um, this is a narrow 5 8 inch hem. And what I did was I turned the hem under about a third of an inch. I used that narrow zigzag stitch, which was uh, 2.5 on my machine, and sewed that all the way around to the other side, and then turned it a second time and sewed it over the top of the first stitching. And what that does is it gives a nice flat seam. Uh, sometimes with knits, uh, when you have a narrow hem, it tends to roll. As you can see, this is kind of rolling a little bit because it hasn't been pressed. But when it's a wider, a um, little bit wider hem and it's sewn twice, it doesn't roll as much. So that's a great tip for working with knits. So I already did the front and I'll show you how I'm going to do the back. I'm working on the wrong side of the fabric. We're going to fold under a third of an inch and zigzag stitch. I'm gonna put my machine back together here. There we go. All right. So 
So I'm folding under about a third of an inch, which is half of the five eighths total. And I'm gonna sew it with that 2.5 narrow zigzag. And I just use my fingers to guide it as I go along. I just turn it as I go. I don't pin, I don't press. I just stitch as I sew it. Use it, uh, turn it with my fingers as I sew it. We won't worry about that. So this type of hem works well on a curved um, hemline. This pattern has two options. You can have it straight across the bottom or you can make it curved. I chose to do the curved one. And with a curved hem, you always run into problems of trying to fold the fabric over nicely and keep it straight. It tends to wrinkle. So when you sew it, you want to pull it just a little bit, not a lot, not just to the point of um, where it's wrinkling, but just if you pull it slightly towards you as you work, it keeps it smooth and you don't end up with those wrinkles. serger or if you use a serger you can also serge the edge and then just fold it over once but I have a serger and I never use it this is just easier We've sewn it one time, turned it over about a quarter inch or a third. Um, and now I'm going to sew it again. I'm gonna turn it over again. It'll clean finish. You won't see any raw edges. I'm gonna sew right over that first line of stitching. No one's gonna know that it's there and it'll leave a nice, smooth, finished hemline. And I'm not back tacking with this either uh, because you're gonna sew the side seams and that will catch the, the threads in the side seam so you don't need to back tack. Again, if you leave a comment, the word live, you'll get notifications each time I go live or tutorials. And if you have any comments, be sure to add those. It's hard for me to answer comments and sew at the same time, so I'll answer them after the video. the finished seam.
It's clean finished, has a nice smooth look to it on the front. Works out great. So that's about halfway through this project. So I'm going to end this video here and do another uh, video in a couple of days where we will do the sleeves and the cuffs and we'll, we'll finish it that way. That'll give you some time to catch up to this point. Um, also, you can look at uh, projects for next month. If you start looking for sales on patterns and I'll post the pattern numbers again uh, here. Make sure and subscribe so that you get notifications of when I'm live uh, sewing and look for individual tutorials uh, on my blog and on YouTube for the pattern alterations. We've gone through each one. There's one for um, shortening sleeves. There's a pattern a video for lengthening sleeves. There's one for shortening the body of the garment. There's one for lengthening the body of the garment. And there's also one for how to tell uh, what sort of alterations you need, comparing your alterations to the measurements. So everything you need should be out there and the links are here on my Facebook page. So thanks for stopping in and I look forward to working with you again. Bye.